Hi, today I'm going to show you how I made this wall mount for my shop computer. I'll start out by making this piece that mounts to the wall. First I'll cut a 12 inch long, 3 inch wide piece of 3 quarter inch plywood. I'll mark the width of a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood and two pieces of quarter inch plywood. Then I'll make a mark 3 and a quarter inch from the end. I'll radius those corners and I'll cut that out on the bandsaw. I can see here it's not quite wide enough, so I'll just move my fence over a little and cut that out. Then I can cut the middle out, shave it down to the line. I'll do a test fit and that looks good. Now I can chop the corners off at the bandsaw and sand down to the line at the belt sander. Now I'm adding a 3 8 round over but I'm stopping 3 8 inch short of the end. You can see that right here. Next I'll make this piece. I'll cut one 3 inch wide piece at 14 inches and one at 13 and a quarter. Then I'll glue these together. I'll make sure they're aligned properly. One end should be flush and the sides should be flush. And then I'll put on plenty of clamps. With the calipers set to one and a half inches, I'll mark an inch and a half from the end and an inch and a half from each side. I'll punch that with an awl and then I can drill it out with a one and three eighths portion of bit. Now over at the table saw, I'll cut some three inch wide strips of plywood. I'll set up a stop block at three and three quarter inch. Then I'll cut five pieces. Now I'll spread glue on all of these pieces and stack them up. But before I clamped these down, I realized they would try to slide around too much. I put a little salt between each layer. The salt adds a little bit of grit to keep it from sliding around. Then I can check it for square and apply clamps. And once the glue is dry, I can clean it up and make sure it's flat with the belt sander. Now I marked an inch and a half from the sides and the end. Now I can drill it out with an inch and three eighths portioner bit. But I didn't drill quite all the way through. You can see here there's about a quarter inch left at the bottom. Now I'll drill down with a one inch portioner bit to meet that hole. This will be used to run wires through. Now I can radius the corners on the bandsaw. Notice this is the side with the one inch hole. Now I can clean that up at the belt sander. I'll mark that radius side onto this piece and then I can round it over right up to that mark. and you can see that here. Now I'll spread some glue on this piece and I'll glue them together making sure to keep the holes aligned. And once again I'll apply plenty of clamping pressure. Once the glue is dry I can radius the front edge of that with the bandsaw. Now I can smooth out that cut on the belt sander. Now I'll use this piece to mark where to stop with a roundover bit. Cutting a 3 8 roundover on that and I'm making sure not to round it over between those two lines. And you can see that here. This other side gets rounded over all the way around except for the flat end. Now I can glue these two pieces together. I'll spread glue on both of these surfaces and then hold that in place with a couple finish nails. Now I'll make this curved support piece. I had this piece designed in CAD, but I basically drew it freehand. All that really matters is that both ends are in the right place. So I just used a combination of freehand and rulers and a compass. Then I cut the shape out of 3 quarter inch plywood on the bandsaw.
Then I just sand it down to the line with the belt sander. Then I marked an offset from the edges using my compass. I want to cut the center of this piece out to allow wires to be run down the arm, but I don't want to cut it apart yet. So I just drilled a hole near both ends, and that way I can use my jigsaw to cut it out. So this way the piece remains intact at the ends, and I can still use it as one piece. As it turns out, I haven't even used this channel yet. I've never run any wires through it. But it's there if I need it. Then I traced this out on a piece of quarter inch plywood, and you can see here I'm adding a three quarter inch thick overhang on the end. I traced two identical pieces. Now I'll cut both of those pieces out on the bandsaw. And you can see here I am staying about a sixteenth inch away from the line. Now I'll spread some glue on the three quarter inch plywood core piece, but making sure not to put any glue on the two little end pieces holding it together. And then I'll glue this down to one of the quarter inch plywood skins. Once the glue has dried, I can use a chisel to remove the end pieces to open up the channel. And now I can spread some glue and glue on the other quarter inch plywood skin. Now I can use my edge belt sander to sand the quarter inch plywood flush to the three quarter inch. And then at the router table I can route a three eighths round over on all the corners except where the quarter inch plywood overhangs the end. Now I'll spread some glue on this notched end. Probably not really necessary, but it doesn't hurt. And I'll spread some glue on the quarter inch plywood overhang pieces and that gets glued into this notch in the end of the vertical piece. I'll use a piece of three quarter inch plywood as a filler and then clamp the outside edges. The quarter inch plywood here and the top here stick out a bit, so I'll sand that off. Next I'll make this computer holder. I'll cut two pieces of plywood, two inches wider than my computer and an inch and a half longer. Now I'll put one piece on my computer and trace out the shape of the computer. I'll add a half inch radius here and an inch and a half radius here. Then I'll cut this out on the bandsaw using a fence to make sure I get straight cut. Then after working my way around the corner, I can use the fence again to make sure I get this edge straight. Cleaning up the corners is just a matter of carefully chewing away at it until I get up to the line. Then I can cut the corners off at an angle and go refine that shape a bit on the belt sander. Now I'll spread some glue on that piece and I'll glue that down to the other rectangle I cut. And I'll just hold that in place with a few brad nails and I'll make sure to keep the brad nails at least a half inch from the edge. Now a quick test fit and that looks good. You know, I'll cut the corners off on the bandsaw. And back at the edge belt sander, I'll sand the two pieces flush. Now the bottom of this piece gets a 3 8 round over all the way around. And the top side also gets a 3 8 round over, but only on the outside. The inside edge will get an 8 inch round over. To be able to get at the computer's lid, I'll cut a notch here, and then on the side I'll cut a notch here for the ports. I'll use my router table with a 3 8 ball nose bit to do this. For this kind of thing, it is really nice to have an incremental router table fence. Makes it very quick to move exact 16th. Now I can make this two-way pivot. I'll start by cutting a piece of plywood to the same width as this middle part of a metal pipe tee. Now I'll glue that down right in the middle of the computer holder. I'll make sure it's square, and then I'll hold it in place with a couple brad nails. I'll cut a couple blocks to three by three and a half inches. 
it'll mark the center of them. I'll draw an inch and a half radius on one side. Now from that radius to the edge, I'll mark a 20 degree angle. I'll also mark a half inch in from the edge and a half inch up from the 20 degree line. So I get this. Then I'll cut a hole in the middle with an inch and three quarter hole saw. The saw kept plugging up, but I got through eventually. Now over at the spindle sander, I'll sand that hole out until it just fits the side of the T. Now I'll drill a 5 16 hole on the crosshairs near the corners. Then I can cut along those lines on the bandsaw. And I can sand down to the line at the edge belt sander. Now I'll use my router to add an eighth inch round over to some of the edges. I'll spread glue on two faces. And I'll glue and nail one of these blocks on one side of the middle block. The other one will get screwed on because it needs to be removable. I pre-drilled into the plywood. Now I can put in the T and screw that side on. I've radiused the inside edges of this piece of pipe and it could get screwed in the T. Two 5 16 bolts go in these holes and a nut goes on the other side. Now a test fit, and it's basically done. I'll add a couple coats of gray spray paint. I gave it two coats with a light sanding in between for a smooth finish. Now I'll mount it to the wall with a couple of three and a half inch screws, making sure it goes into a stud. I mounted mine at 48 inches to the top, but that would need to be changed depending on your height. Now I can put it back together, put the computer in it, and it's done. For anyone wondering about dust getting in this thing, I don't think that's a big concern because the fan on these particular computers almost never comes on. And to keep the dust out of the keyboard, I'm going to put a silicone keyboard cover on this. Well, I know this is going to get a lot of use in my shop, so feel free to duplicate it. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.